So for years with portrait and wedding photography, I have championed two cameras with prime lenses, but I've changed. That's good. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. Okay, let's switch lenses now. <laughs> Ever since switching to mirrorless, I picked up the R5 last year. I only picked up two Canon RF lenses, the 50 millimeter F1.2 and the 15 to 35 F2.8 RF. Now natively, these lenses on the mirrorless bodies are incredible. There is super snappy focus and it's literally designed to be put on the mirrorless body. I actually got the 15 to 35 because I picked up a C70 cinema camera and I wanted a zoom lens for all of my video work. Uh, when I was working with the C200, I am pretty much exclusively on wedding days, started using the 16 to 35 Canon EF. And so I wanted to get the RF version and it has worked phenomenally for video. Lived on my C70 like 90 to 95% of the shots I took with it and throughout wedding days and the documentary we worked on with Joe all last year. So incredible lens, but I never really considered using it for photography until I got it and then wanted to use a native piece of glass on a mirrorless stills camera. And now with the multitude of gear that we have in this studio, there's just so much to choose from. I've really enjoyed having a very simple kit when I go out and shoot portraits and when I go out and shoot weddings. One camera, two lenses. And that's kind of it. Honestly, the R5 is pretty much everything I've dreamed of having in a stills camera. It has an EVF electronic viewfinder so I can see the images before I take them. Uh, it has face detection autofocus, which doesn't work in groups of people, but is great for portraits um, and locking focus, especially all the way wide open at 1.2, which this lens is just incredible for. It's got insane resolution. It's got a 45 megapixel sensor and super good dynamic range on the raw image. And as I mentioned, like this combination, the 50 millimeter with this camera is lights out for portraits. If I can shoot most of my portraits with face detection, autofocus, it'll latch onto an eye and I can shoot it at F 1.2 and it just looks insane. And there's super fast card options. I have a 300 megabyte per second SD card that I usually use for my video work, you know, shooting raw video. But then you also have that CF Express card. And the CF Express is super incredible for burst mode. You know, if a couple's walking down the aisle or some action shot is happening, even sports, then the read write speed for when you copy those images to your computer is just lightning fast. Now in past years, I've gone to shoots with two cameras and like five different lenses in hopes to search for super creative shots. I feel like I accomplished those goals because I just got incredible images of my portraiture in my portfolio throughout the years with a tilt shift lens, 85, 135, doing double exposures with all the combinations of lenses, all that crazy stuff. And I don't wanna negate like that being a core foundation of who I am as a photographer, but moving into this next season now that I have established that kind of portfolio, uh, I want to really kind of strip it back and think, you know, I could still make images like that with fewer tools because it started to become more about getting the banger photos, getting the, the post-worthy Instagram creative portraits instead instead of being present with my clients virtually the whole time. It's not that I wasn't showing up for my clients and being there and being present, but I just want to lean into that even more as I do more and more intentional and less portrait and wedding work. So the second half of last year and kind of my commitment to this year is anytime I have a portrait shoot, I just wanna bring this camera, these two lenses and my tilt shift lens. I don't have that over here, let me grab it. And my tilt shift lens, which will be adapted EF to RF. That's gonna cut so funny. <laughs> now, as I said, I love the 50 millimeter. It's super sharp. This glass is one of the best lenses I think Canon has ever made, but it forces you to move your feet and find your composition and not just rely on zooming in and out. Now, that was my argument in the past for using prime lenses because it forced you to be a more active photographer, a more creative photographer. And so having used this 15 to 35 with all my filmmaking, taking a crack at it with photography taught me a lesson that I didn't realize I needed to learn. Constantly, I would keep my 24 mil prime in my bag for super wide situations. If I was in a room with people getting ready or just needed a wider focal length, I would keep that in the bag just in case. But I would rarely use it, maybe, I don't know, 5% of the time. So putting that into one lens now with having the option to have a 24 and a 35 in the same lens, 
is super critical for me. It still gives me the ability to be creative with different focal options, but packs two lenses into one lens. Now I do miss the two stops at dynamic range I lose in the aperture in this, going from 1.4 with the prime lenses to 2.8 here, but the sensors on the R5 and even the R6 when I am rocking two camera bodies on wedding days, it just doesn't really matter. The 1.4 on the 35 millimeter EF Mark I that I had, my constant criticism of it at wide open f1.4 is that it was just so soft. It would miss focus quite a bit. Now that might be different for the Mark II, 35 Mark II EF, but this thing is rock solid and super sharp, especially native on a mirrorless camera. Look at me back in the saddle, making a gear tutorial. <laughs> for years, my go-to setup was this Ona Bowery bag, which has seen a lot. <laughs> been like eight years I've been using this. It's very beat up. And my constant criticism of it is that it was always just exploding with stuff. The size of it, it's, it's pretty small. It can hold three lenses, it can hold memory cards and batteries and that stuff, but it just feels like it's exploding when it's like that. And I would pair it with my Hold Fast Money Maker or this Clever Supply Dual Harness and Rock 2 camera bodies. Back in the day, two 5D Mark IVs and now R5 and R6. Which brings me to my next point, my newest addition. The Clever Supply Sling. The, the Clever Supply Sling. <laughs> Todd over at Clever Supply has been working with me and other people in the studio for a couple of years now, uh, starting off with his solo straps that had peak design integration and this Clever Dual Harness, which I've done a video about that also has that peak design quick release integration. I've loved using this thing, but now having this bag, I feel like it's so lights out with the simple setup for portrait sessions, as well as my two camera setup for wedding days. Now with this stripped down setup for portrait sessions, I can fit almost all of this inside of this bag because it has more space than the Ona. You know, I might choose to put all three lenses in there and then just carry the body by, you know, separately. Or I could keep the camera with a lens on it, two lenses in the bag with other things like memory cards, batteries, or a flash if I wanted to kind of mess with flash. There's different options. It's modular, it's bigger, and thing I super love to do, this Bluetooth speaker, the JBL Clip 3, link down below. I can still clip this thing to the side of this bag on the side straps that just kind of hang off the side there. It's the first time I've done it. It's pretty, pretty epic. And I have a go-to Spotify playlist, which is also linked below if you're interested in that. It's called the Romantic Portrait Jams playlist. I use it to make people cry. <laughs> I gotta stop doing the, dang it. I knew that was gonna happen. Hold on, stay there. Don't move. The charger. Yeah. Yes. And then alternatively, outside of the running gun portrait setup, it's gonna work amazing for my wedding setup as well. I'll rock the R5 with the 50 on one side and the R6 with the 15 to 35 on the other. And then I can carry my flash, a tilt shift lens, and maybe another lens in this bag as well, along with the memory cards, batteries, the JBL clip and any other knickknacks I might need, especially since there is a little bit of extra room in this bag with a zipper pouch. This bag at the time of posting is actually currently in a Kickstarter. So if you'd like to back that, you can get 20% off the bag. I'll leave that link down below as well. Todd's a homie and the bag design is incredible. So go check that out. He already funded it in a day. He got 200% funding in a day which is a testament to the quality stuff you make. Anyway, I just want to give an update on that stuff. I don't update on gear all that often, so I hope that it was helpful and I hope you liked it. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Gotta stop doing the like and subscribe stuff at the end. They don't want to hear that. Right? <laughs>